Hi, I'm Ms. Emily and welcome to the Onslow County Museum. Thank you for joining me as we continue our discussion into Native American history. So what we're going to talk about now is all about the dugout canoe. So as you can see behind me is a huge piece of wood. Right? And you think, well, it's just a tree log. But upon closer investigation, you can see that the log itself has actually got some carbon here done. It looks a little bit different versus just a round tree log. So the story of our dugout canoe is that it was actually found in 1968 around the Half Moon branch of the New River. So the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers were dredging the river. So that means they were digging up the base of the river because there was a lot of flooding in that area. And so dredging is helping to make the river get a little bit deeper there so it wouldn't flood as bad. And the um, engineers ran across this obstruction. They couldn't get it out of the way. Well, along that side of the river, there was a piece of property there. And Mr. L.A. Cottle said, well, whatever it is, I'll help you get it out with my tractor as long as I can keep it. So they said, sure. So Mr. Cottle got his tractor and helped hoisted this log out of the river. And once they put it up onto the bank where his property is, I said, hmm, this doesn't necessarily look like a log. It looks a little bit different. And they figured out, well, it's actually a canoe. So Mr. Cottle was able to keep that piece of history, essentially, that, that, that canoe, until the Trexler Middle School Tar Hill Juniors Historians Club bought it from Mr. Cottle. And there it remained at the middle school until it was donated to the Onslow County Museum in 1986. So once the museum had the canoe, we had the NC State Underwater Archaeology Office come and examine it to do an investigation on this canoe because what's very special about our canoe is it has a V shape, which is unusual. So most Native American dugout canoes were in that traditional U shape. That hole, that middle part of the boat is a U shape, whereas our canoe has a V shape. So that was unusual to begin with. So we also were able to determine that it's anywhere from the Raven Carbon dating, so it's anywhere from 750 years old, give or minus 50 years. Um, the tree itself, um, we say, was felled whenever the tree, so that piece of wood, was felled, so like cut down or burned down, um, anywhere from like 200 to 500 years old. So the tree itself was anywhere from 200 to 500 years old. And the date of the canoe um, is anywhere between 1200 to 1300 AD. So we don't have the specific date right, or time in which it was made or how old it is, but give or take 1200 to 1300 AD. So that's the year we typically date our canoe. Um, how long it is? 38 feet long and four inches long. So 38 feet and four inches long. Um, the end of the canoe is broken off. So we think maybe whenever they were taken up, up out of the river, the end of that canoe broke off. And so we think that maybe there was actually a four foot extra or addition onto the canoe um, that got lost. Um, so the canoe is pretty big. It's also four feet wide. So it's, a, it's pretty big. And the canoe itself would fit easily about 20 people. And you would need about that much, uh, that many people in order to kind of steer the canoe and even just to kind of get it going. Um, so as to why it's that V-shaped, we don't know. Um, maybe, maybe they were trying a different design to see if it could work. And when they put it in the water, it didn't float. We're not quite sure why it's that V-shape versus the traditional U-shape of what a dugout canoe would have been like. So Native Americans would have definitely made canoes, um, mainly would have used cypress, and that's what our canoe is made out of. So a lot of cypress trees would have been growing in and around the river area, so around the water. Um, and our Native Americans, what they would have done is they would have actually started uh, on the base of the tree. They would have started a fire. 
Um, so think about, we think, oh, well, they have an ax. They have these tools that they can use to cut down a tree. No, we don't have any metal tools yet. Those are the Europeans that bring those types of tools with them. But prior to that, Native Americans have fire. So they're gonna start a fire at the base of the tree. And over time, that fire is just gonna eat away at the trunk, right? That base, the bottom where it meets the, the land, essentially, it's gonna eat away. And eventually the tree is just gonna fall over, right? And once they have the tree down, then on top of the tree, the Native Americans are gonna strip the bark off of the tree. And they can probably use the bark for, think about the long houses that we talked about earlier, they can probably use that bark for their housing. But once they strip the bark off, then they're actually gonna start a fire on top of the log. Just a small fire. They don't want it to go crazy because if they get it too hot, then it's gonna burn through the whole tree. And they don't want that. They wanna start a low smoldering fire just on the very top of the tree. And then as the fire kind of burns down and burns out, it's gonna basically think about charring the top of the tree, chars that tree. And then they can take sharp stone tools or even oyster shells, and they're gonna to start to scrape off that burned out piece of the tree. And then when they get to a layer that is not burned out, it's still pretty tough, they're gonna start another fire. And they're gonna continue that process until they keep digging down, down, down into the tree to where they get so many inches worth on the bottom. So that's gonna be their base of their canoe. And then their sides, they're actually gonna make it into like a square shape is what we typically see. So again, we're gonna to go to John White's paintings and his drawings. He um, did a drawing of Native Americans building the canoe and the base or the end of the canoe had a square shape. They have the U hole and then on the end of the canoe, it's square. It's not gonna be this V like what our canoe is. So again, that's something that's totally unique to our canoe, whereas traditional dugout canoes are gonna have a square end and they're gonna have that U shaped. Um, and then as the burning gets lower, um, Native Americans are actually gonna take it out into the water. One, obviously to see if it's whether or not it's gonna float or if it's gonna tip them over. Um, and if they're gonna do those two things, then they have to start the process all over again. So they wanna make sure that it actually floats and then it's actually gonna sit where they need it to um, and actually be able to use it. So as they got down to the base, that also sitting in that water is gonna help protect the tree, that trunk, from not getting too hot and from burning holes into the base of the, the canoe at that point. Because if you do that, you got a hole in your canoe and it's not gonna work. So building a canoe um, was very time consuming. It could take a long time to make a canoe. Think about no metal tools. You don't have a shovel or something to chip away. You literally have stone tools and fire. And that's what Native Americans would have been using to make their canoe. So thank you so much for joining me today as we talked about dugout canoes. Um, please be sure to check out our other Native American history videos and look at our website for other virtual programming and tours. Thank you so much and take care.